Welcome to Diane Andrews in black and white. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm so used to everyone doing Don is filming. Donald is filming me. It's always Diane Andrews in black and white, my television show. And we're filming for the show today. I have some friends here and some new acquaintances and some other people that are just here because of something different. Fuji's Totes. I started Fuji's Totes because of my puppy Fuji. And uh, we were in Houston. Everybody here knows Jada knew I was going to cry. Um, and Fuji was my best friend. I lost him March 28th. But I had been on this journey for about four and a half years. This was Fuji's pillow. This was the first pillow made. We were in Houston, and I had left his medicine. And I said, oh, Fuji, I need to make you some luggage. You need your own luggage. Because I didn't set out to make a pillow. It wasn't my desire to make a pillow, an animal pillow. And I said, but, and then I, I just, you know, everybody who knows me knows I'm a mathematician by undergrad. And uh, in chemistry, I have a BS in mathematics, and I can sew a little bit. I mean, it's not rocket science, but it's amazing. It's about to be patented. It is patent pending now. No one in the country has a pillow like this, and uh, that has been a patent request. This was the first pillow made. This was almost five years ago. Again, Fuji passed March 28th. We washed this pillow. He lays on this pillow, and Gucci, my other little puppy, who helped me. Uh, with the pillow also, he's pretty rough. Gucci was a professional. I called them the professionals and the madman, okay? But Gucci's pillow is, is there now, and people who've been in my home know that Gucci still sleeps on his pillow. When I, I started this journey, and Pete Lasavio, who you'll hear talk later, will tell you, I talked to Pete about it. And um, I tried and tried. I wanted everything made in America. I am a made-in-America person. I mean, I can buy everything made in America because our politicians have sold us out many, many, many years ago and still continue to. Uh, but I can, they, I said on my show, and Don, Donald Trezano will tell you, he hears it all the time, you may not want, you may not need my little money, but you're not going to get my little money. Not from China. Not something that I manufactured and put my name and Fuji's name behind. I wanted to make the best pillow you could. And that's what I've done. This is the best pillow you can make. Again, this is almost five years old. Washing machine, no spill, it's spill proof. You put my, I have to bring my, I just have another little puppy, Fuji, too, not to replace Fuji. But because we have to, as raising cane, y'all, I'm going on Shark's Tank. I'm putting it in the air. It's going to be patented. I don't know another dog pillow patent pending unless it's not patented. About God, God, about a month ago in October, the U.S. Patent Office sent us. Uh, Keen Miller, Russell Primo, I don't know if you know, he's my patent attorney down at Keen Miller, and we've been working on the patent for three years. And uh, we got patent pending a year ago. They just sent us from the patent office saying an issue fee to fill out this, send us this money, fill out this application, and that means we're issuing you your patent license. It takes four to six months after that. So I'm pretty sure Fuji's toes will be patented, and that's a legacy to my baby Fuji. Um, but Gucci helped a lot in testing the pillow too because he's the rough boy. So I wanted to welcome you all to this and show you the quality. When I went to, um, first I tried, I went to the prison because attorney Pete LaSavio told me they had used some uh, work release prisoners, he and his wife, Marie. 
And I went out there. There's a separate prison here in Baton Rouge behind the prison. I signed a, uh, uh, a, I went out there three or four times, met with the warden. They have a separate warden, and they have a separate prison. I signed an, a work release application to have people make this pillow. So when I first went to MADE, I, find a master, I found a master seamstress. And then because you need a, a big pattern, pattern to create the designs that are going to the U.S. Patent Office. I found the patent attorney, and I um, had them made and moved on on the process. So the process then was to find where I wanted to made, and my goal was made in America. I talked to Jeff um, DeGiano from, he came back here today. He couldn't make it tonight, but he said, Pete turned me on to, uh, Jeff makes all the school uniforms in South, South Louisiana, doesn't he, Pete? Hmm? And um, so Pete introduced me to him when I couldn't get in 20, this started in 19. So in 2020, I signed the contract. By the end of 2020, of course, they were all let out, right? Because those are nonviolent workers. Because I was going to have, we were going to cut, and we were going to, I mean, you know, it's, again, not rocket science, but it's unique. <laughs> Most things that are happen to get a patent are not rocket science. You happen them, even making the antibiotics, right, happen by chance. So, um, and then I, when I was talking to Fuji back in Houston, I said, you know what? The big dogs need a pillow too. And uh, so I sat and I drew that. I said, okay, because I want to give you two or three things for one. Again, Fuji can go in here. You'll see some of that. We'll have some of that being seen. And so does his toys, his luggage, his lease. And so whatever you have him, you're carrying him. And um, in the bottom is you can have two or three pounds. And uh, when Fuji had to go to the emergency room, I had him in this pillow in January uh, of 2022. So it's a wonderful pillow, you know, and it's, it's about to be patented. And I have some people here who, have, have, who knew Fuji and who do have the pillows. In fact, my assistant, I think, is about four of, of the pillows for her daughters. And um, again, I wanted to make the best pillow. I made, everybody knows I'm a writer, pretty much, and I design all my logos and all my book covers, but I designed a logo in Infinity, Infinity that says endless love and endless comfort. Because when you buy this pillow, it shows the dog that you have endless love and endless comfort. In fact, this first pillow here, the fiber is not as good as the fiber we used. I finally ended up in Pakistan after going to Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico, uh, and I tried every place. I took three months calling every place in this country, y'all, trying to get this pillow made in America. Jeff told me today, he said, I knew you were going to get that pillow made, Diane. He said, because I've never seen anybody with such determination to, not get any, to get something made and not being made in China. What I say is what I mean. I've got some people who have worked for me before. If I tell you that, that's what I'm going to do. I talk about China on my, you know, I'm getting into my shows, but I talk about China and what they've done to this country, what we've allowed them to do, uh, and I was not going to have a pillow being made over there by those people. I'm helping a group in Pakistan that was a flooded community. That's kind of my thing. And I always try to help people, as one of my employers will probably tell you. And uh, so this is Fuji told you. You'll see the large pillow also. But I designed it. I said, okay, what can I do that's different for the big dog? Because you're not carrying a 150-pound rock wall around. We're going to show you the big pillow. It snaps. It has a spread. So what you're getting and if you see any pictures, you'll see a Rockwiler, and that's my assistant and her fiance, Mason's Rockwiler. The pillar is about up to here on me, which doesn't say a lot, but okay, it's five foot almost. But um, it has a snaps on it that the dog can go under, and you can take that off and it snaps, male, female, we have under his bonnet here, and it becomes a warm comfort for him in the rain because it's fleece, and this is uh, what they call, uh, it doesn't, no shrinkage and no spillover, which means I wash these all, again, this is four and a half years old. This is a large pillow, and this can carry, carry up to 100, and probably, I'd say we've had up to 130 pound dogs on it. And these snap off. The pillow's on the flyer. Uh, that was this pillow, well I like this one. I think we got that one at home. <laughs> and. Uh, they have male-female snaps. 
My nephew, when he comes to my house, he sleeps on two of them upstairs. <laughs> and when I exercise, it's hard wood. I uh, exercise on one of these. So it, it goes, you know, under here. And you snap it the dog, and it snaps down the dog. So it just came to me. And I give credit to Fuji and to God. Pastor Ricard. From Elevate, Elevate Ministries, I've been downtown to help him feed the homeless. And uh, yeah. he's still doing that after all these years. 15 years. Thank you, Pastor. Well, <laughs> amen. Come on, let's give Fuji totes a hand clap, if we would. <laughs> amen. So I won't be long, of course. Um, that's what every preacher says before they step up. <laughs> and they take you into a litany of things after four hours later. So, But I'm, I'm going to be honest tonight. I won't be long. Um, I asked Diane earlier, had asked her what was like the theme of tonight. And she spoke about endurance. And I thought about this king. This king had summoned all of the great strong men in the city. And he placed this huge boulder in the middle of the road. And he said, I will give unendless wealth to anyone who can press upon this rock and move it. And so all the strong men came into the city and they all pressed against the rock and no one could move the rock. So he looked around and there was a young poor man in the crowd and he pointed out to the poor man and he said, come. He said, I want you to press upon this rock. And the poor man said, well, what will I get? He said, I will give you unendless wealth. And so the poor man the first day pressed on the rock and the rock didn't budge. The next day he came out and he pressed on the rock. The rock didn't move. The next day and the next day. This went on for two years. He pressed against the rock. Pretty soon he got frustrated. So he calls the king. He said, king, listen, I've been pressing upon this rock and it's not moving. The king said, keep pressing. So it went on another year. The man kept pressing and the rock would not move. So finally he got really frustrated. And he began to swear upon the king's name and he wished death upon the king. So he went to the king and said, king, this is not working. You have me looking foolish out here, pressing on this rock day in and day out. He said, I quit. The king said, why are you going to quit now? He said, because it's not working. He says, yes, it is. He said, I hadn't moved this rock, not even a centimeter. He said, it's working. He says, I didn't move it. The king said, well, I never told you to move the rock. I only told you to press upon the rock. Say, look at your biceps. Look how strong you are. Look at your calves. Look how large they are. Look at your abs, how defined they are. I never told you to move the rock. I only told you to press upon the rock. Number one, purpose. Somebody shout purpose. Purpose. Number two, release. Release. Shout release. Release. Number three, endurance. Endurance. Number four, stretch. And number five, you have to search. search. So tonight, I want to encourage, encourage you with that. Mm -hmm. That only he that endures to the end, somebody shout wins. Win. That's my time. It's really a, a amazing for me coming here tonight because I, some of the people that I have been really close to are here by accident for me. I had no idea Pete LaSavia would be here. Pete and I were fellow black belts in Taekwondo. I've known Pete for 25 years. Uh, some of our great friends we share. Uh, Caress in the back. Caress, her dad dated my mother before my, my mother met my father here in Baton Rouge in the 50s. So I'm just, I'm connecting with, 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 with people um, that are just, uh, you know, I got one of, one of my uh, fellow salespeople in the, in the back, and then Sabrina, uh, they, I've known them for years. And uh, Scott Singletary, uh, you know, brought me here tonight. Scott's my neighbor. I've known Scott. We've hunted together and done business together for years. But it's all one big community, and it's funny how God brings people together. It's not an accident. You know, I haven't known her very, Diane, very long, but she's known Cedric Patton, my partner, and interviewed him for years. Cedric has been with our company for 40 years. Uh, a lot of people don't know my dad was a, uh, a minority. 
we are registered with General Motors as minority dealers. My dad, his mother was an Indian squaw in Oklahoma, and so we're Native American, and I am, I'm registered with General Motors as a Native American minority dealer. I'm on the council, and Cedric is as well. But my dad hired Cedric as a salesperson out of Southeastern University in 1983 when he was finished his football career. And he started as a salesman and is my partner today uh, and runs two of the dealerships for us. And Cedric is the only uh, African American in Baton Rouge market that is a dealer. But it doesn't matter what color Cedric is. He understands that you do the job. It doesn't matter what color you are. And he's been able to overcome many adversities in this life just similar to what Diana has, has, has done. Uh, my dad, you know, he never took a dime from the government, even when he could have. He could have gone and applied for grants and applied for school and applied for free medical and all the things that were available to Native Americans, but he chose not to. And just like Diana is choosing not to go to communist China and, you know, get, you know, in, in basically in bed with those people, more or less, and that's what's happened to this country, unfortunately. And I, maybe COVID was a good thing because maybe it woke us up before it was too late to, to realize that we've, that, you know, that we've basically been, you know, selling out to China. Um, but we're, we're very proud to have Diane in this community, and I'm proud to be a friend of yours, and I hope this does well for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was privileged enough to go out to the rodeo in Angola about two Sundays ago with um, Eric and Lisa, his, wife, his lovely wife, um, who is on the board. And his father, there's a big bust when you come in of his father uh, at the rodeo at the stadium. I was 10,000 people it holds now for the rodeo. I'd never been there before. I've never seen anything like it. I felt safer there than I do walking the streets day or night in, in Baton Rouge in any place. It is an amazing facility. We met the guard that spoke six languages. I feel like an idiot. I can't speak anything. My ex-husband could speak five or six languages, but that's not, I can't speak anything but English halfway. So uh, it, it, it's amazing what the warden had done, has done, I think what wardens before him did, and what, it, how these people, you know, they're so talented. It was amazing to me. I'd never been there to anything like this before, and everyone should go out there, support the arts and crafts. I think they get 35% of an, and, um, Eric goes out there and, and gives caps to them, and they love those caps and peanuts. And uh, again, I was just, and, and he, nobody, you know, he's one of the largest dealers in the state, if not the largest dealer in the state, and nobody's a stranger to him out there, whether they're a, pris a prisoner, an inmate, I guess they're called now, uh, or whoever they are. I'm, I'm so impressed to know and happy to have met uh, Mr. Lane on my show. And we realized we had the same picture of the world and have some of the same, most of the same morals of what's going on in this world. And, and uh, if we don't stop what's going on, I have to get on my platform. You know, I'm sorry, I got on with you, Pastor. I can't talk without talking about what's going on in the world. But I don't know how we do it. We don't stop this, we're this close to communism, y'all. And I've been preaching my show over eight years. And I lost many friends behind it. But some came back and told me, Diane, you were right. <laughs> and um, on, on what I say. And still black women are the least, and white suburban women, the least to vote, to stop voting Democratic. If we look at the hood, it looks just like it did 50 years ago, if not the worst, worse than it did 50 years ago. But before I, uh, I say something, I want to thank, y'all know I cry very easily, okay? I have to thank Judah Isaac, come up here. This building would not be open without him. Thank you. Love you. And I thank my lovely assistant here, Jada, for working with me so hard for the last two months. But he took this building as his own because if you had walked in here, you know, a month ago, it did not look like this. This building has been closed for two years after COVID. So, uh, I mean, we work day and night, huh, 
Judah getting this thing ready. So I appreciate you, Judah. You know I love you. This will be the face of Fuji's totes. I went and got him from Mississippi, Carol and I. He's an AKC registered toy poodle. Mm, just like my other Fuji was. And I told you how I came over. He loves everybody. He is so loving. Come on, baby. I was at Diane's one day and we was just sitting around talking and eating and having a little drink or whatever. <laughs> and she was telling me about the pillow. And I have 14 grandkids, three grand doggies. And she was telling me about the pillow, so I told my daughter, she was here from Texas, and I said, um, Diane have pillows where you can carry a puppy in the pillow. She said, I don't think I ever heard of that. I said, well, maybe you need to try to find out what this is about first. So Diane came by the house and she bought the pillow. And I had just bought my granddaughter a $150 pillow. Huge. It's like a couch for a dog. <laughs> and um, Diane comes in with this pillow, same color. And he got the pillow, and that was it. He don't look at the hundred and fifty dollar pillow anymore. <laughs> it's yeah. all over with. Yeah. So, so I told Diane, I said, "Well, I'm gonna have to get a pillow for Louisiana because he took it to Texas. I mean, we don't have it at home anymore." So, it took me a while to get to Texas because I had some things going on work. And uh, Diane said, "Well, you need to come by and pick the pillow up before you um, go to Texas." I said, "Well, okay, I'm gonna do that." But I didn't get a chance, so I had to go to Texas in a hurry. I forgot to get the pillow. When I got to Texas, as if though this dog knew I was supposed to be bringing the pillow, <laughs> he looked at me and he went. <laughs> I said, and his name is Zeke. I said, hey, Zeke, hey, Mama Zeke, you know, Mama Baby, how you doing? And, and I, I reached out and he was like, meow. <laughs> I said, well, hell, I should have bought the pillow. So I called Diane, I said, hey, he's not even talking. She said, Gwen, I told you you should have come by and got the pillow. I said, yeah, I need to get the pillow because this is a problem. <laughs> so I ended up getting the big pillow because they were here for uh, the 4th of July, I think it was, right? So they were here for the 4th of July. And he's such a smart dog. What kind of dog is he, Diane? Because he's familiar with it. What is he? Is a little wiener dog? Yeah, I think so. Um, he likes to cover up, you know, he, he, he know how to cover himself up at night and stuff. So we took the pillow and I kind of unsnapped it a little bit so he could get used to it. And I don't know, maybe he had a friend in there that finished unsnapping it for him. Because when I, because when I came back in, the, in there where he was, he was all snuggled up under the pillow. And I said, well, what about this one? You, you want this pillow? And he looked at me again. I said, Dan, this dog got sense. He really has sense, you know? And look, that Fuji tote, I ain't no puppy, but I want one. Cause if, because if he love it like that, then I can sleep on it too, you know? He really loves that pillow. And he don't go anywhere else. And I'm, when I'm in Houston, and I look over there and I see the $150 pillow, and then I see the, the, the Fuji tote, and I said, well, you know, I didn't keep the receipt and it wouldn't be right to take it back, you know. And so my daughter said, well, why don't you just take it home with you and that way you won't have to buy a Fuji's tote. That's what he did. <laughs> it's almost, he, almost as though he heard the stir. That's what he did. So I told her, I said, no, I'm going to leave everything right here. But invest in it. It's a good investment. And they loves the Fuji totes. Diane and I have been friends a long time. Yeah. Um, I've started several business. <laughs> she was with my nonprofit women, redefining women and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. She she's a smart chick, so I stay close to people that are smart. <laughs> um, Diamond, I am not a dog lover, y'all. Up word. until eight months ago. <laughs> my husband had been talking about he wanted a German Shepherd dog and I finally gave in and Diamond is eight months old and she's 90 pounds and every 
bed we have purchased diamond diamond has torn up to threads but she has not torn the top you told me she gonna tear it up That's what you she told me. loves it when she comes into our bedroom she goes and get right on her bed and she lays there um my daughter has a dog uh andrew yeah, andy like we call him and Andy is the same way. Andy has torn up every pillow. And she wanted me to tell you all, Andy has not torn that pillow. <laughs> so I don't know what it's made out of, but I, I know with Diamond, yeah. she doesn't even try to, you know, yarn tear it, it yeah. like tear it, yeah. like she did with the other pillows, yeah. um, which we have found just unbelievable. My husband's like, I just don't understand what it is about this pillow. But... Diamond hasn't torn it up. Hi everybody, I'm Jada, I'm Miss Diane's assistant. I just want to start off by saying that it has been a pleasure and an honor to work for someone as amazing as her. She's taught me so many things. I'm 22 years old and I've learned so much from her. She's so wise, so intelligent and so kind. She inspires me and it's just been great to see um, Fuji's totes come together. I wasn't there for the beginning of it, but I am here for the end of it, and I'm here for the rest of the journey. So it's just great to see it. I'm a dog lover. I yeah. love <laughs> animal more than people. People. Um, so yeah, this was when I found out what she was doing. I was obsessed. I was like, this is so for me. Um, but I have a Chihuahua mix and a Rottweiler, um, and I have multiple pillows. I'm obsessed with them. They're obsessed with them. Um, Cash, my Rottweiler, he loves his pillow. He eats on his pillow, sleeps on his pillow, licks his <laughs> paws on his pillow, brings his toys to his pillow. Nyla actually sleeps under the, um, the spread the of the That's small one. pillow. She likes to lay under our comforter, uh, the couch. So she loves to lay under here. So it's perfect for dogs who like to be tucked in, especially when it's storming and it's raining you know they get a lot of anxiety so it's just perfect you know so uh i thank everybody from cup for coming thank everybody who worked on getting this together and i'm gonna go get me some good food here because i hadn't eaten does anybody else have anything to say thank you baskin our our music for being here eric has played for me several times yeah. i think that's about it then right you all let's just eat drink and be merry you know, I, she's been a friend of mine for a long time, and we've known each other. In fact, our friendship has outlasted uh, two of my marriages. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.